What's going on? Welcome back to the channel. Today, I'm starting the video off in the basement. So, we need to get the Charger front and rear wide body bumpers over to the shop. I'm not gonna bring the side skirts because when you clip the side skirts in, they're very hard to unclip. So I don't wanna have to worry about unclipping them and or damaging them. So what I'm gonna do is head over to the shop. I'm also bringing the flares with me, um, the brand new headlights, all the stuff so I can get a good idea of what the car is gonna look like, be able to look down the side of it and et cetera. So my friend's gonna come over later on. I'm gonna run down the shop. I'll bring the flares with me right now, the headlights with me. I'll start installing that stuff. The hood is in the back of my truck. And then once he gets to the shop, he has a minivan. Um, we'll throw these bumpers in the minivan and uh, head back to the shop with them and stick them on. But they're E-coated. So the reason I haven't had them on the car, I put them on once, but I don't want them to be damaged because if they get scratches or anything like that, then I have to go back and prime them, sand them. And uh, you know, it just takes a lot longer and right now I could just pull them out of the bags, scuff them with some scuff stuff and an emery cloth and literally just base them, clear them. So let's head down to the shop and get all this stuff on the car. By the end of this video, I wanna have the bumpers on it, the taillights, headlights, um, the flares. I want it to look like a car. I'm gonna put the back glass in, the quarter windows. I'm just gonna set them in, not gonna glue them in. But uh, yeah, get it. give you guys a really, really nice feel of what the car is going to look like because I know a lot of people still, they can see it a little bit better now that it's primered, but they still can't 100% see what it's going to be wide body. So over at the body shop and now what I'm going to do is pull all the masking tape off the car. Then I'm going to start mounting the headlights. Um, I'm probably just going to mount one side of the flares. The driver's side, I wasn't sure which one was the driver's side. There's a bunch of flares in there. There's like six pieces. So uh, then I'll mount all the, the attachments for the rear bumper. I'll put the, uh, I'll set the glass in it and uh, just kind of work my way through the car and just try to get it, you know, as, as much looking like a car as possible. I want to really see what it's going to look like. And I think, you know, headlights, tail lights, flares. Um, the only thing is it's going to sit super high. It doesn't have any drivetrain in it. Um, and it does it has like the SXT suspension. So it already did sit pretty high and then it has the twenties on it. So yeah, let's, uh, get to work, get all this stuff on there and, uh, just kind of go from there. And then once everything is on, push it outside. And I also have the hood. We'll throw the hood on there and, uh, see what she looks like.
just finished putting the headlights in the charger as well as the rear back glass, the stuff to mount the rear bumper. I mounted, I just taped on the, uh, the fender flares. So they do have a bunch of clips, but the issue with the clips is it's very hard to get them out. And since they're all brand new, I don't wanna risk damaging them or anything like that. I didn't put this back flare right here on because the rear bumper is gonna hold it in the back. And then we'll put the rear bumper on. I'll put the tail lights in. So my friend Chris has the minivan hookup so we can get the bumpers over here inside. Just pulled the bumpers out of the basement. And I mean, man, they're so big. I have to come up the stairs with the angle of the bumper. The front one's not as bad. So we're gonna throw these in Chris's minivan because uh, they'll fit and they'll be nice and protected. Got the bumpers in the back of the minivan. It was kind of a nightmare because this piece of plastic is like not a bag. It's just like a split thing. I don't know. It's just blowing all over in the wind. But now we're heading back to the shop. So we can see what this looks like. I can't wait. So just finished putting the wide body parts on the charger as well as the tail lights, the back glass and the quarter glass. And it's just, it's just really wide. I mean, this is way wider than I was expecting it to be. And it's just, the rear bumper is just so aggressive. And then you come to the front up here. I like how those hatch looks with the, it almost looks like a little duck bill. And then we kind of, actually Josh kind of molded this in a little bit better. So when it's made out of carbon fiber, the window sits up there a lot nicer. And it looks, I don't know, to me it looks a lot better because it's more, more flush than it was on the Magnum. Also, um, you know, like I said before, I need to block this thing out. This is just high build primer. It almost looks like, in the video, it almost looks like the uh, Destroyer Gray or Nardo Gray or whatever gray that uh, everybody wants these th things to be painted. But then you come up to the front and look at this thing down the side. And it looks just so mean. It doesn't have a grill or any of that stuff because there's the uh, Hellcat grills there and then there's a grill there. Another grill there, but yeah, the uh, the new headlights and how wide this thing is. Just look at this. Super wide. So we need to get this thing outside and uh, and check it out.
I don't even think video gives it justice, but it's just so, so wide. I just can't believe how wide she looks. And it's really high off the ground. The wheels are really sunk in. So when I put the Trackhawk wheels on there, they actually stick the right distance out. Um, I want to get some different wheels eventually, but once we get all the Trackhawk drivetrain and everything in here, I'll probably roll around with the Trackhawk wheels and some 325s for quite some time. But just the front bumper and the rear bumper and the flares make this thing so much more aggressive. I mean, it just, it looks totally different than a stock wide body charger, just being a station wagon. And it's so much better than just front end converting a Magnum. I don't know, there's not words, but I'm just super happy that we're at the stage and now we can let it sit outside and bake in the sun and uh, all those sanding scratches will shrink, the primer will shrink into them, block this baby out and uh, start fill filling in some of these pinholes from uh, the body filler in certain spots and then we'll just kind of get it ready for paint and continue the fabrication process. But yeah, I, I can't believe she's in a stage already. Think of the charger, Chris. Man, it looks pretty awesome really wide though it is wide in a good way it's just like look looking from the back right here it's just crazy wide like you just look at it and you're just like man that that's that's fat but it's a station wagon yeah it's gonna be an incredible wagon too, man. Uh, it's gonna turn some heads i'll tell you that yeah what do you think about it josh where you at <laughs> where you go what, what do you think of the wagon the wide body stuff? Yeah, yeah, it's gonna be sick. It's definitely, definitely wide. Now it needs to go down. Oh, it, it needs to go down yeah. a ways. Once it's lowered and slower. Once it has all that heavy engine and drivetrain in there, it'll, it'll squat those, those SXD springs, but we'll get it low. It definitely needs to be low, so. I'm actually working on Josh's Lexus because it needs new engine mounts. And I guess these things are a really big problem. And, uh, I guess he said that there's no videos on how to fix them, but it looks like they just literally, you can see the bottom subframe, the two bolts in the bottom, and then there's one bolt in the top that you can see on both sides. So I don't think it's gonna be too too difficult, um, but I think what's gonna have to, have to happen is I'm gonna jack it up, put the front on jack stands, and then I'll have to use the jack to push the engine up so I can get the engine mounts out and then I could stick the new ones in it. So we'll see how bad they are. He says what's happening every time when you put it in drive, the, uh, it just has this really bad vibration. So hopefully we can get this thing all situated. This is a uh, pretty cool car. It has a, like the big brakes on it. Uh, this one's all wheel drive, but they do make rear wheel drive versions of this. We'll get both the engine mounts out of the Lexus. The passenger side one actually just fell out when I jacked the engine all the way up. There's a bolt on top of it, it's a 17 mil, the bottoms are 17 mils. It's pretty simple, but on the driver's side, it pretty much needed to be pushed over a little bit, lowered the engine down on the passenger side all the way up. On the uh, driver's side, kind of lowered it down and Josh pushed it, and then I pried it with a flathead to pop the, uh, the threads, I don't know, where the, these threads up past the holes. And also, his car has coilovers on it, so it has these spacers to adjust for the uh, geometry change in the axles. But what we're gonna do on the new ones is actually just trim these a little bit so it's a little bit easier to get them into the subframe because technically you're supposed to, how long, how, how many hours is this supposed to take, Josh? It was like 12 or 14. Yeah, they want, you, they want you to drop the subframe, they want you to do all kinds of crazy stuff and all I did was jack the engine up, subframes completely bolted in. Also, uh, from the neighbor, we borrowed this, uh, this pretty cool long extension. It's half inch, goes to three eighths, and then it's a 17 swivel, a short swivel. So that really helped out a lot. So gonna cut those off, get the new mounts in. Just finished putting the Lexus all back together and cutting the ends of the bolts off on the driver's side worked out very well. Um, just check the orientation of the driver's side motor mount or both the motor mounts because the passenger side one is really easy to get in there, but the driver's side one is a little bit more difficult. But after you get everything kind of lined up, it just really goes in there. But now I think, I think we're gonna take it for a test drive.
uh, used to like shake. Yeah. Hey. I mean, those motor mounts didn't like seem bad, but. I mean, you didn't feel much vibration in there, did you? It's pretty cool. Yeah. Probably should have seen what it felt like before. We just got back from the test drive with Josh's Lexus and now everything is good. It doesn't try to shake you apart or anything. So the motor mounts or the engine mounts were bad, which is, uh, he was really happy. So now he doesn't have to drive his truck. He could actually drive the Lexus. And uh, what I'm gonna do now is I'm gonna go over to the junkyard, grab the engine, tranny and transfer case from the track hawk. And uh, I need to fab up the tranny tunnel. So we're gonna start working on that. But I wanna get the engine tranny in there and uh, just kind of show you guys where we're at with that. What I do now is I'm gonna go over to the junkyard, grab the engine, tranny, and transfer case from the track hawk, and uh, I need to fab up the tranny tunnel. So we're gonna start working on that, but I wanna get the engine tranny in there and uh, just kind of show you guys where we're at with that. But I'm really glad that that thing is finally primed. I just finished loading the track hawk engine block, the track hawk 8 HP 95 transmission, and the transfer case into my truck. I'm gonna take them over to the body shop and then we could put them into the charger. I've already bolted them in before, but what I need to do is actually make the tranny tunnel. So I cut the tranny tunnel prior to make everything fit and now I need to make it. So I also need to bring this mount right here. This mounts on the driver's side. This is where the tranny cross member bolts. So I need to fabricate that so it fits in a different spot. So uh, yeah, that's uh, pretty much the plan. Get this thing in the car. And then in the next video, I could fabricate the tranny tunnel and probably seam seal the whole car since it's now primered. Over at the shop, have the block tranny transfer case. What we're gonna do now is pull the Magnum charger, whatever you wanna call it, back into the shop. Borrow Trevor's engine hoist. Gonna conclude this video working on the charger i'm glad that we have primer on it i'm really glad that i was able to stick all the body panels on it just being able to kind of see what it was going to look like even though it sits really high off the ground because there's not really any weight in the car a lot of people were commenting about how high it sits it's not going to sit that high i'm most likely going to drop it an inch lower than a factory charger wide body hellcat so it will sit and have a nice stance. I don't wanna to go too low. I really don't like to slam my cars because I like them to be drivable, especially because I wanna take it to racetracks, road courses, etc. But I'm glad that the engine block tranny transfer case is now in. One thing, I'm gonna have Jose from DIY Gang check his track hawk because I feel like I almost have my tranny and transfer case too high up in the tranny tunnel. So I was trying to use the factory Hellcat slash scat pack um, tranny mount because it bolts to the transfer case. Everything seemed like it worked, but it seems like it's pushing it up too high in the tranny tunnel. I feel like it's way too high. Um, also, if you look at track hawks at the auction, um, because you know the only track hawk I had was burnt to a million pieces, but um, it seems like the supercharger is kind of angled down, unlike a Hellcat where it's nice and level. So he's going to measure everything, see what the 
um, drive shaft angle and all that stuff is and what this angle of the engine is and hopefully um, you know once I get those measurements I will just adjust my transmission and transfer case to suit because it's it's up in there but I feel like it could be a lot lower also I was able to fix Josh's Lexus because the engine mounts were bad in it um, you know it took a couple hours but now that thing's fixed, runs and drives. He doesn't have to drive his diesel truck anymore. He can drive the Lexus, save some money on gas. And uh, yeah, we're gonna get this thing done relatively quick. Once I have that training tunnel finished, I could paint the car. So um, actually, after I have the training tunnel finished, I'll do the roof, make the mold. Then block, you know, by that, that time, I'll have the car blocked out, reprimered, and I could get this thing 100% painted. I'm shooting to have the body painted by the end of November which is in a few weeks. So that's coming up pretty quick. So we can get the whole body painted. I'll probably have, you know, the, the body painted, the fenders painted, uh, the rear hatch painted. Um, also paint the roof to make the mold, but I'll just use some cheap paint for that because I just need to really quickly make a mold. Same thing goes with the hatch. I'll probably just use some single stage black for the roof and the hatch just so I can buff it out and make it nice and smooth. But that's gonna conclude this video. If you like these videos, make sure you click the subscribe button, thumbs up, throw a comment below. See you guys next time. Bye.